baptized when I asked her. Yeah. <laughs> so Lord bless her. By the way, Regina, I have never sung this song just with everybody else. I have a let's start it again. I have a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table. There's shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Though the world looks upon us as we struggle alone, they say we have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing how I wish they could see. They Lord, for your blessings on me. I know I'm not worthy, and these clothes are not new. I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you. And to me, that's all that matters though the world may not see thank you lord for your blessings on me i've a roof up above me i've a good place to sleep there's food on my table, there's shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I've a roof up above me, I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Amen. Well, I, I believe she was predestinated to sing that song today. <laughs> Amen. Things don't happen just to happen. Amen. I appreciate that. Appreciate that, Sister Anna. How many are you thankful for the blessings of the Lord on your life? You wouldn't be here without Him. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for His blessings. Brother Mark, if you want to come take up our offer. Let's just sing about, continue to sing about his goodness. 
sing one of sing one of Deborah the Dale's favorites. God is good all the time. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> They can bring that up. <clears throat> Amen. God, God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart. Sing it out to him. Clap your hands. Oh, God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. Our God is good. If you're walking, if you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound, cause He's promised to never. Our God is good all the time. We were sinners. Yes, we were sinners. So unworthy. Still for us he chose to die. Filled us with his Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify. everlasting and his mercies they will never end God is good all the time through this heart of praise in this heart of mine God is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine God Let's sing that last verse one more time. We were sinners. We were sinners, so unworthy. Still for us, he chose to die. Filled us with his Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting. Mercies, they will never end. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. Our God is good. One more time. God is good. Let's stand to our feet. <clears throat> oh, God is good all the time. He 
put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time through the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. Our God is good. He's so good. Our God is good all the time. Amen. Give the Lord a clap of praise. If he's been good to you. He's worthy to be praised and worshiped. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Praise God. Maybe we can practice that one more, once again. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's sing this real quick, and then we'll have Brother Roe come. Amen. Just remain standing. Keeps you awake. Let's sing, uh, sing uh, I Would Not Be Denied, page 663 in your spiral book. Amen. Let's just sing this. When pangs of death seized on my soul, unto the Lord I cried. Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be stood upon his word. I would not be denied. I would not be denied till Jesus came and made me whole. I would not be denied. Old Satan, old Satan said my the Lord is here. Do you believe that? I would not be denied. I would not be denied till Jesus came and made me whole. I would not be denied. I would But the blood, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that me white as snow, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that 
makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. One more time. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word tonight or this afternoon? Amen. Let's sing, open the eyes of my heart as Brother Royal comes. <clears throat> Amen. They call him, at home, they call him, we call him Nino. Because, you know, he's related. So it's a, it's a relation, family type word, you know. But uh, he's, or I call him Brother Royal. But he's both, so you can call him anything, anything you want. As long, as long as he's a brother to you. <laughs> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. God opened our eyes, but he opened heaven to us this Amen. morning, this, like this evening, Amen. because of the message of the hour. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. And I trust that uh, something was said this morning that, uh, that blessed you. And uh, Lord willing, we're going to minister again tonight uh, from the message of the hour. I just love the word of God. Amen. And uh, uh, I just, uh, <clears throat> I will formally invite Brother uh, Wade Dale. I actually invited him last year, but I don't know what, what his, his excuse was, but he would. At first, he was saying he didn't get my email, and then he checked, and he was yeah, there. <laughs> and so, uh, I won't let, let you off the hook this time. On a march, people are asking for you, but, but wait. They, they can't forget your ministry. Who can? <laughs> Amen. And Brother Luis, they're also waiting for you. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm just so, so glad to be a, a part of this assembly, yes, connected sir. to this assembly. And thank you, Brother Dale, for the confidence. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you for being patient with me. Because I've, I've always thought, you know, what can a Filipino tell the Americans? Who, you know, the message came from here. And I don't even, I can't even speak the, the language right. But I believe God will help me. Amen. But thank you for your patience. Uh, tonight I'm going to show a, uh, 
another aspect of our ministry in the Philippines. And uh, it's about the demolition of the message community, a whole message community in Antipolo Rizal in the Philippines. Uh, 60 families are now without a home and struggling to survive on a daily basis because they were demolished. First slide, please. This is the church I'm talking about. Back in 19, uh, I think 1996 is, was when I led the whole group to the Lord. You know, we do expo seminars, which is uh, nothing but uh, message presentation seminars to denominational ministers. And uh, I met the former pastor of this church, and so he set up a uh, Mr. Expo seminar for me. Uh, he invited all his ministers uh, because he, start, he, he started a uh, mobile Bible school. <coughs> uh, it's a Bible school on wheels. You know? yeah, yeah. They go from place to place and train uh, uh, ministers. And so they, uh, he invited them over to attend the seminar. And at the end of the three-day seminar, <clears throat> they all saw the light of the message and decided to be baptized as a whole congregation, 87 people. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, this is a very vibrant church. You know, they have many outreaches, different parts of our country. And uh, they have now been all been... Uh, uh, influenced by the message, a lot of them have come to the message because of their witness. That's me. The next next slide. That's me preaching to the congregation there. <coughs> uh, Eighty-seven believers were baptized in the name of the Lord as they saw the light of the message that I presented to them. Next slide. But in March, March 1, this year, this thing happened. The whole church was demolished, yeah. along with 60 houses right. of people that live in the community. It's a property um, uh, of about uh, 14 acres. And all, every single house in that community was demolished. It is a case of a um, land dispute it's between uh, uh, benef beneficiary tenants of our land reform program and rich business. You know, in, in a country like ours, rich business, they have the power. Sure, and yeah. and uh, the brothers and sisters, they lost the case and... Uh, Property was awarded to somebody that they don't even know. They don't. They, they haven't even seen this person, but it was awarded to them by the judge. So, armed with a uh, court order, they start demolishing the church. And instead, in, in, in spite of our pleadings, you know, they still went ahead and demolished the church. Next. Now, this was was what left of the beautiful church. You know, we helped that church a lot. <clears throat> we uh, drilled the well and su made a, a water supply system for the whole community, but we can't have access, the people can't have access to that uh, as well, the water supply. See, this is a case of poor f farmer beneficiaries of land reform program versus rich business. Yeah. Yeah. Next. It was a whole day of destruction. It was uh, probably three dozens of people, men, uh, which were the which was the demolition staff, and they did it illegally. Uh, there was a private army not 50 yards away from the demolition site, and it's illegal in our country to do that. They were not <clears throat> given enough notice. They were not even offered a uh, resettlement or even given any financial assist assistance from the mayor's office. No, they, they just uh, destroyed their homes. Next. 
Not a single house was spared. Next. Uh, this child wonders why people tore up their house. Yeah. And she said, this, they destroyed my, my bedroom and, my, and our bathroom, and now I don't even know how I can take a bath. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Believers stop are scattered all over the place. Can you imagine? 60 families. <clears throat> uh, they say, what, what are we going to do with our lives now? Next. Uh, this was the day after the demolition. I came there and met with the people and asked them, you know, what they feel, what they, what they want to do. Of course, they want to keep on serving the Lord. Sure. We're never discouraged. <clears throat> but how can we do it? We don't have a church now. Yeah. <clears throat> so we, we talked together and came up with a plan. Next. Next. <clears throat> this is Brother Jose Cano. He's an evangelist. And we started uh, having services Sunday afternoon out on the street. And this was one of the services. And it said, when we first moved in 37 years ago, a, in, uh, we had the hardest time. Um, Hard for me to be the text there. Yeah. He said, often we had to suck cogon roots. Yeah. That's grass roots. Yeah. They suck on them. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> to ease hunger pains while we wait for our first harvest of sweet potatoes. Other times we had to eat the wild berries from the lone tree in the land. I mean, they had a hard time. Sure. 37 years, they tilled the land and planted all the trees there. Next. <clears throat> and now they lost everything. Mm -hmm. Sister Lisa here is one of the, used to be a woman preacher, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah>. You know, <clears throat> I love women <clears throat> preachers yeah. because there are good women preachers. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Once they find out they can't preach, they stop. <laughs> 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 So Sister Lisa testified that they planted every tree on, on the 14-acre tract of land. We were the first settlers on this wasteland, she said, which was later named Sitio Charismatic. Think about it. The, the village was named after the group there, Charismatic, Sitio Charismatic, right, right. in reference to believers known as Charismatics. Right. <clears throat> Next. See the church equipment dump, dumped out on the street. You, you see the barbed wire, and they put the sign up, no trespassing. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> so it was, this was what was left of the believer's house. 30 believing families now live in cramped spaces in nearby villages. Others were forced to pay high rent or move far from their jobs and schools to make ends meet. Next. We started holding services out on the street to manifest our indignation of the illegally, illegally implemented demolition. <clears throat> you see, we were having services right on the street. Amen. That's a tricycle right there. Right. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> it's illegal to demolish houses without relocation or financial assistance given to the affected families. <clears throat> That's why we protested out on the street. Right, yeah. Next. <clears throat> and believers from different local assemblies flocked to the streets to support the meetings. Because of the street services that we did, we caught the attention of media, some government and non-government agencies who are now helping the displaced families. Amen. Praise the Lord for Amen. that. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Amen. Next. Yeah. <clears throat> So the Bible says, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that, Amen. that weep Amen. and be of the same mind one toward another. Amen. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate and be not wise in your own conceits. Amen. This was the very reason that we canceled our anniversary meeting. Not because, by the way, it didn't show up. No, 
but you, you know, uh, there's no point in celebrating right. while well, this thing happened to 60 families. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I want you to just uh, pray that uh, the brothers and sisters can rebuild their homes, Amen. especially their <clears throat> their church, so uh, they can continue on serving the Lord Amen. and to be a witness to this uh, community. God bless you. And now we go to the word. I'm going to preach on open heaven. We can actually look heaven in the face. How many believe that? Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> because of the message of the hour, Amen. heaven has opened Amen. widely Amen. to us, and we can actually look Amen. heaven in the face. Let's Amen. all stand. Be <clears throat> the word of God, Hosea chapter 2, verse 16. <clears throat> and it shall be at that day saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, right. and shalt call me no more Baali. Yeah. <clears throat> In case you don't understand what Ishi means, it means husband, That's right. and Baali means Lord. Right. Yeah. You know, Lord to servant relationship is a good relationship. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> but it wasn't good enough for God, you know. Right. Right. That's why in John 15, 15, he said, <clears throat> Henceforth, I call you not servants, Amen. for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Amen. But I have called you friends, for all the things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Right. He has revealed himself completely exactly. to us. No secrets right. between us and the Lord. Amen. He's trying to elevate our relationship right. with him. That's right. <clears throat> into a more intimate one. Yes, sir. Amen. That's, right. That's between a, a bridegroom and a bride. Right. Hallelujah. We are living in the fulfillment of this prophecy. Amen. Glory. Amen. Before I let you sit down, <clears throat> let me quote the prophet, modern events made clear by prophecy. He said, we are not living in a Pentecostal age. Right. We are living in another age. Amen. You see, we're not living in a Methodist age. Right. We are living in another age. Yeah. We're living up here to the right. bride age. Amen. The calling out of the church Amen. and getting it together for the rapture. Amen. You believe that? Amen. I believe Amen. that. Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's the age that we're living in. But I said, to my honest opinion, that's exactly Amen. the truth. <clears throat> Amen. Right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> Help us once again, Lord. <clears throat> open our understanding. Open the windows of heaven, Lord, and pour us out a blessing such as we are not able to contain this afternoon. Just meet every need that's represented in this congregation <clears throat> and bless our souls, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Heaven open to John. Amen. Right. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. It says, After this I looked, and behold, what happened? The door, a door was opened in heaven. Right. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be right. hereafter. This was right before the opening of the seals. Right. 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 <clears throat> what happened? There was a door open, came right. open in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Next slide, please. We all know John types the believer who will be summoned. Absolutely. Or called up. Right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Brother Benham quotes the same scripture, Revelation 4.1. He said, after this I looked 
and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Amen. Now, how many times did we hear Brother Branham say, Come up higher? Right. <laughs> it's actually come up hither. Right. <laughs> but the way the prophet was saying it is, come up higher. Right. Right. <laughs> Means come from the place where we're setting in to a higher place. Yes. Hallelujah. Please. He said, caught up in the vision. <clears throat> Believers are caught up in the vision. Right. Yes. Like John was caught up in his vision. <clears throat> he said, he was caught up into what? Into glory. Right. We find then that John was a type of every true believer that will be summoned by Christ on high. Amen. Right. Sure. I believe that in my heart. Amen. That's right. Summon. Yep. Come up higher. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Exactly. The message clarifies the concept of heaven. Mm -hmm. yep. But Ram said, Christ is revealed in, our, in his own word. You're going to found, find out one of these days that when you go to heaven, you don't fly off somewhere else. Amen. You Amen. are still right here, Amen. too, just in another dimension, right. faster than this. Amen. Hallelujah. You believe that? Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Exactly right. <laughs> Amen. Only in this message have I heard this. Right. I've never heard it from anywhere else. No theologian has ever said this. No. Amen. <clears throat> that heaven is right here. Amen. Right. It's just another dimension. Uh -huh. right. And the elements there move a lot faster than, the, than we do here Amen. in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and Brother Bram says heaven consists of the world. Amen. Right. Of the word. Amen. If heaven is open to us... What is in heaven? Right. <laughs> heaven consists of the word. Yes, sir. Amen. As I said, if God speaks and sends you, did he send you? Amen. Right. <laughs> he backs up what you say. Yes. Whatever you say, he right. backs it up. Amen. See? Notice, if you're an ambassador from heaven, <clears throat> and I believe we all are, Amen. Right. Right. we came from heaven. We're yes. going right. back to Amen. heaven. In the meantime, we're representing heaven on earth. Right, right, and if you're ambassadors from heaven, all heaven is behind you. Amen. Right, right. Amen. And heaven is consisted of the word, Amen. meaning it's made up of the Amen. word. Amen. Right, right. Amen. Heaven is full of the word. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law right. till all be fulfilled. Right. Right. And then he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never Amen. pass away. Right. Right. This is what backs us up. Right. 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 Amen. Yes. The word <clears throat> which consists of heaven. Yes. Right. You see, brass represents judgment, but Ram says. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. And thy heaven that is above over thy head shall be brass, right. and the earth is the under thee shall be iron. Amen. Right. <clears throat> now brass represents divine judgment. Amen. Right. <clears throat> and this whole world is ripe for the judgment Amen. of God. Right. Right. Not earthly judgment or mental judgment, but divine judgment. Amen. See? The brass altar, the altar where, where the sacrifice was burnt, was made of brass. Right. The brazen altar and all means that it was divine. Right. There is where the divine price was paid Amen. at the brass. Right. Right. <clears throat> now, uh, why I showed you this quote is because... <clears throat> I believe that heaven is full of he uh, heaven is full of angels. Right. <laughs> it's full of them. Matthew 18, verse 10. Yeah. Take heed that you despise one of these little ones, for I say unto you yeah. that in heaven their theophanies, uh, exactly. 
Their theophanies, their angels, do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Brother Bram calls it our representation in heaven. <clears throat> they always behold the face of the Father in heaven. As we sit here this afternoon, we have something representing us in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we didn't know about this until we heard the message. <laughs> Why? Because this message opened heaven to Amen. us. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Let me show you what we have come to when we came to the message. <clears throat> it says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, right. unto the city of the living God, right. unto heavenly Jerusalem, right. and to an innumerable company of angels. We have right. come to that. I'd like to hear an amen. amen. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we have come to an innumerable number of angels. <clears throat> and I can't get a reaction from you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> In 2 Kings, we can recall that Elisha was to be kidnapped by the Syrians, if you remember. Because they had a dilemma. You know, they set up an ambush. <clears throat> But the Israeli soldiers, <clears throat> they stay away from the ambush site. Yep, yep. <laughs> and the king started suspecting that uh, uh, one of his generals is, is for the Israel, Israelites. And uh, <clears throat> you're supporting Israel. But they said, no, we're not, we're not supporting Israel. We're all for you. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Our problem is <laughs> they got a prophet in Samaria. <laughs> Before we even set up our ambush, this prophet tells them what to do right, to avoid right. these places. Yep, right. <clears throat> That's why, you know, they always win. Right. So the solution was to kidnap Elisha. Yeah. Yep. And so a battalion of soldiers, Syrian soldiers, came to Elisha <clears throat> to try to kidnap him. Right. Yeah. We read, and Elisha... Uh, and, and, and they were around the, uh, around the mountains, yep. thousands of soldiers probably. And Elisha prayed yep. and, saw, and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. <clears throat> because <clears throat> Gehazi, he saw these, all these Syrian soldiers, <clears throat> and he thought that, that was their end. Mm -hmm. You know, we die right here. <clears throat> yep. yeah, right. But Elisha doesn't seem to be concerned. He said, relax. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's yeah. more that are with us yeah. than are with them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. And Gehazi looked look around and said, but Master, it's just you and me here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so Elisha prayed to God to open the eyes of his young servant, his young man. And then he saw, <clears throat> and behold, the mountain was full of horses, and chariots of fire round about Elisha. <clears throat> the paradigm changed right there. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> because uh, there were more angels, chariots, uh, driving chariots of fire around them than all the Syrian soldiers <clears throat> that would want to do them harm. Hallelujah. <clears throat> And so, Brother Benham, and for instance, Elijah, when he went out and the skies was just brass, and he said, he said, divine judgment was upon the people because they went away from God in the days of Ahab. Yeah. And Gehazi went up to look and see what, that the skies, what the skies look like, and he come there and said, it looks like brass, see? Yeah. Divine judgment. Right. <clears throat> Isn't it amazing that God opened the eyes of Gehazi yep, right. <clears throat> and he blinded the eyes of the Syrians? Right, right. Yep. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what am I telling you? <clears throat> this world is ripe for judgment. Right. Heaven is closed upon this world. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When they look upon the heavens, they see judgment. Right. But we see something else. Amen. We see the doors of heaven open. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. It's salvation to the bride. <clears throat> but destruction to the people Amen. who don't know the Lord. Right. Let's consider Brother Branham's ministry. Angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man ministry. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Let's take his birth. Yeah. You know, in, the, in that Kentucky Log house where Brother Branham was born, yeah. an angel actually protected the mother and the child from freezing to death. Right. Right. Angel right. from heaven. Amen. What about the first baptism in 1933 at the start of his ministry? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> We, we see that heaven opened and a great light shone from heaven. Right. And a voice was heard Amen. as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming right. of Christ. So are you sent to forerun right. the second Amen. coming of Christ. Yeah, right. Right. What about when he was commissioned by the angel? Yeah, right. The angel said, you have been called <clears throat> to bring a gift of divine healing to the world. And, it's, and he said, if you can be sincere yeah. and cause the people to believe in you, right. then nothing can stand before your prayer, not even cancer. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Right. And then the pillar of fire was photographed in 1950. Yeah, right. What was that? Angel of the Lord. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. <laughs> what about when he was caught behind the curtain of time? Right. Hallelujah. Heaven actually opened to Brother Branham right. yeah. as the Lord showed him his converts. Yeah, right. Right. I believe he saw me there. Right. <laughs> he saw Brother Sam there. Yeah. He saw all of us there. Right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> because heaven opened. Yes. What about the opening of the seals? Right. Sure. <clears throat> A mysterious cloud appears and as if you look at it, the appearance of it is it's it, as if a hole was bored through heaven and seven angels formed the face of the Son of Man in the clouds over Arizona. Right. It's like a big opening in heaven. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Why? Because heaven opened to us. Yes, sir. Right. Hallelujah. What about the death of our Elijah? <clears throat> he was taken away by a chariot of fire. Right. <clears throat> Uh, I was told that the, when the car accident happened, that he, there was a burst of fire. Yeah. And he, our prophet was taken away by, by a chariot of fire, which, according to the Bible, was driven by angels. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sure <laughs> Do you see angels ascending and descending right. upon the ministry of the Son of Man? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, obedience opens heaven. Yeah. Oh, right. Mark right. chapter 1, verse 10. And straightway coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. Amen. This happened during the baptism of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, <clears throat> John the Baptist uh, was refusing to baptize the Lord Jesus. Yeah. He said, I can't baptize you. You need to baptize me. Right. But the Lord said, suffer it. Right. Amen. Let us... Suffer it so we can fulfill God's righteousness, right. all, the, uh, all of God's righteousness. Yeah, right. And because of John's obedience and the Lord's humility, heaven opened. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. And that dove alighted upon him. Amen. Matthew chapter 3, verse 15 and 17 says, And Jesus answering unto him sa and said, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh or behooveth us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Right. This means judgment to the world, yep. yeah. but blessings to the right. believer. Right. Amen. Yes. Right. And Brother Bram told about the painting in Germany that he saw. In Germany, he said, once I saw a picture and it always stuck with me. A German painter has painted a, a picture that's called the, the Cloud Land. 
And when you see it off a distance, it's the horriblest looking gloom you ever seen. Just clouds matted together when you're looking at it from a distance. But when you get real close to it, it changes. Right. It's angels' wings beating together, singing hallelujahs to the Lord. Amen. So that's, that's what the gloom is sometimes. If you look at it at long distance, it's gloomy and dark. Amen. But take God at his word Amen. and be certain that he's God and move up close to it and you'll find out it's just angels' wings a beating Amen. together. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Amen. That's Amen. why we see the headlines on the papers and we read of the news online of the big one. They say, uh, we've always talked of the big one taking place in California. Right. Yeah. But one scientist said, but now we can quantify it. Yeah. That's the difference. We can quantify it. When the big one hits, <clears throat> at least 50,000 people will be dead right away. Right. And he said 200 billion pesos worth of damage will be yeah. <clears throat> uh, sure. inflicted in California. Amen. Yeah, sure. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when they hear about the earthquake in California, <clears throat> people are scared to death. But when the believers hear about it, we look up Amen. and we know that Amen. our redemption Amen. draw at night. Hallelujah. Amen. Just this morning, I was looking and there was a minister, an Israelite minister who is pushing for the rebuilding of the third temple. <laughs> right on the temple mount. They wanted to rebuild the temple. Hallelujah. And the people, they... Uh, they're worried about it because they, it would mean more. I mean, the, the Muslim people will not, uh, will not let it happen. It would mean war. Uh, some people say that could even start the third world war. Nuclear war. Hallelujah. But, but when, when we hear these things happening, we remember Brother Madam saying, it will be built. <laughs> It will be built. This Amen. is signs of the time. Amen. This is prophecy being fulfilled. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Judgment to the unbelievers, Amen. to the world, but blessings to the believer. Amen. Right. Glory. <clears throat> well, now, didn't the Bible say that uh, authority was both given to the Lord in heaven and on earth? Amen. By opening heaven to us, God is given us access to heaven after heaven uh, you can alter you can actually alter heaven I'm sorry by altering things on earth Matthew 16 19 says I will give you unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven amen you can alter heaven by altering things on earth and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth yeah. shall be loose in heaven. Yeah. Matthew 28, 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, All power is given unto me, both in heaven Amen. and on earth. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> this kind of power is in the bright today. Yeah. You see, heaven opened because of prophecy. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each one of them. It's like heaven opened and these tongues of fire appeared and uh, settled uh, on each one of them. Amen, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. and began to speak with other thanks right. as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because all powers of heaven was poured down to earth yes. 
And the Lord even said, ye shall receive power right. after that the Holy right. Ghost has come upon you. Right. Exactly. Hallelujah. Yes. You see, what happened? God ripped his son apart. Yeah. Brother Bram said, I said, but Jesus did die and rise again. Amen. He sent his spirit back upon the church. Yes. Yeah. That spirit that was in him is the very same spirit in the church now. Amen. And it can and it will produce what Jesus produced. I believe that with all my heart. Right. He said in John 5, 19, the son can do nothing of himself. Amen. But what he see the father do. Amen. For what things soever he doeth, there also, this also doeth the son likewise. Right. Right. <clears throat> And then Brother Bram says, what was God showing? What was he doing to Abraham? God was showing that he was going to do by Christ was, was making a covenant. And God taking his own son to Calvary and he tore him apart and he took one part and set it in his right hand above which was his body and sent his spirit back to earth. Right. So this was what God did when Jesus died on the cross. Right. He ripped him, his own son apart, set his body on high, but he sent his spirit right. to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's the same Messiah today. He was then. Only without the corporal body here on earth. He sent his spirit back to use your body amen. and my body. Amen. Oh my, I say amen, amen. to that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. This is what the message did. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we're writing a book of Acts, like I said this morning. But I'm saying if that first branch came forth, mm -hmm. that branch out of the vine that wrote a book of Acts behind it, if that branch ever put forth a vine, put forth another branch, that will write another book of Acts behind it Amen. because it's the same life. Amen. If one of your grape wines out there brings forth blue grapes, if it puts forth another branch, it will bring forth blue grapes. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what kind of life they manifested? In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 43 and 47. And I read, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and they had all things in common. Don't get quiet on me now. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men right. as every man had need. Amen. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Right. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen, right. We start doing this, people will start leaving the church. Amen. Yeah. But no, it didn't happen that way. Right. The right. Lord added to the church Amen. such that were predestinated before the foundation right. of the world. Right. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 and 35. I'm not done yet. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and of one soul. Amen. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Amen. Nobody said, that big house is my house. Yeah. Right. That big car is my car. <laughs> yeah. This is my food. These are my clothes. This belongs to me. These are my property. <clears throat> but they had all things 
common. I'm telling you, this is the first original communism. The book of Acts is the first original communism because it's powered and enforced by the love of God. Not by the barrel of a gun, but by the love of God. Hallelujah. This can only happen <clears throat> if heaven opens. If you can appreciate what is happening behind the corridors of heaven. <clears throat> This can happen here on earth. Amen. Shared lives. Yes. Hallelujah. And great grace was upon them. Oh, my. I've heard it said that uh, because the message came, there's no more grace. <laughs> the message is the word. Where there is more word, there must be more grace. Hallelujah. That's why this morning we heard that the headstone, when it came, it cried, grace, grace, Amen. double grace. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. The more word we hear, yep. the more grace we experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Glory Amen. to God. Yes, sir, brother. And great grace was upon them all. Yes. Neither was there anything among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of land and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made upon every man according to their need. What am I telling you, my brothers and sisters? Am I telling you to go ahead and sell your properties now? <laughs> I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying you must be ready to do that. <laughs> because the squeeze is coming. Amen? And there will come a time you won't be able to say, that's my house, that's my car. Right. <clears throat> it's for everybody. Amen. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is the secret to opening the floodgates of heaven. Right. Malachi 3. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. A lot of you are allergic to this scripture. <laughs> No, many, many Filipinos are allergic to this scripture. <clears throat> Malachi 3.10. Let me just read it. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. Listen now. I'm showing you how to open the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And pour you out a blessing so that there shall not be room enough right. to receive it. That's right. <clears throat> I know people that give expecting to receive. Right. You know, people give their tithes because they believe in the principle that God would restore it to you a hundredfold. Mm -hmm. That's their motive. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that's your motive, you better just... Go in, go in business. Yeah. Start a business. Yeah. Right. Not give to the church. Just start yeah. a business. Yeah. <laughs> because we don't give expecting to receive from God. Right. We give to open heaven. Right. Let me say that again. We give to open heaven. Right. Just open the windows of heaven. God will open it. And I said, Lord, why windows? I thought you were going to open the doors of heaven. But why windows? And I looked at my house. There are more windows than doors. I pour you out the blessing such that you will not be able to contain Hallelujah. What about Jacob's ladder? The promise of access to heaven is to Abraham's seed. Listen to this. And then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and the top of it reached into heaven. 
and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Amen. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein, wherein thou liest. To thee will I give it and to thy seed. Amen. It was not only promised to Jacob, it was not promised only to Isaac, not only to Abraham, but to Abraham's seed. Amen. And we are the seed of Abraham by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 There's a ladder set up for you. And heaven has been opened. And angels are actually ascending and descending on this ladder to your life. You see, Jesus was ministered to by angels. In the time of temptation in Matthew chapter 4 verse 11... Then the devil lived him. He tried so hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, he just couldn't no. trap him. No, right. <laughs> and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. He had a hard time. Right. Right. <clears throat> and the angels came and helped him, Amen. strengthened him. Amen. Think about it. Reinforcement from heaven will always come every time a child of God is in Amen. trouble. I believe that below my heart. When you seem tired and weary and discouraged and ready to give up, angels can now easily come to the rescue because the heaven has been opened. Hallelujah. What happened in Gethsemane? Luke chapter 22. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone's cast. Jesus was asking for strength from his disciples. And he couldn't get them. <laughs> he, he, he couldn't even get them to pray. Not for one, for one hour. And then so he was withdrawn from them by the stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed and saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. What an agony. And watch what happens next. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven and strengthened him. Glory to God. We believe in the strengthening power of the Holy Ghost. But the angels give us that extra push when we need it. I believe that you know my heart. Hallelujah. I believe in angels. Before coming to this Message, I thought angels were part of a fairy tale. (laughs) Hallelujah. Came to find out they were true. Came to find out they are descending and ascending upon the Son of Man ministry. Matthew 26, 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father as he was hanging on the cross. And he shall presently give me more than 12 re- legions of heaven. I don't know what a legion is. How many? Thousands probably. About six thousand. Six thousand is one legion. Six thousands. Times 12. That's 12 times 6,000 legion of angels. Hmm. Well, aren't we empowered to do the same? Hallelujah. We are. Let me tell you, we are empowered to do the same. Hallelujah. This is a a very nice scripture, so let me show it. Let let me just share it with you. Psalms 139 and verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet they were none of them. Meaning, your body parts, your personal parts, whatever it is, mental parts, (laughs) has been written in the book of life. In God's book. Even when they were still unperfect. Even in your imperfect state, God saw them already. 
And yet he chose to bless you. He chose to open heaven to you. Romans 8.30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Past tense. Amen. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 51. I'm closing now in a few minutes. And he said unto them, to them, to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. You see, the premise is because you believe in the ministry of the Son of Man. Son of Man is prophet. God be, being a prophet, yes. God manifesting himself as a person who knows right. all things. Right. Right. Hallelujah. And this is, or, or, this is what happened in this message. Yes, huh. You see, if heaven is open to you, you will be able to see your name in the new book. Right. <laughs> right. yeah. This is the main difference between denominational teaching and the message teaching. Denominational right. people, they preach from a closed book. Yeah. Right. Amen. And when a preacher preaches from a closed book, they get nothing. The people get nothing. Hallelujah. Right. Right. But thank God we are preaching from an open book. Amen. Right. Amen. And when Amen. the books, when, 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 when the book is open, then Amen. you can see your Amen. name. Amen. That's the reason John actually jumped for joy. Yeah. He stopped weeping and he started rejoicing because he saw his name in the book. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what does it name? What does it mean to see your name in the Lamb's book? Now, your name is now in the new book, not the book of life. But the Lamb's book of life, what the Lamb redeemed. All that was redeemed by the Lamb is written in the Lamb's book of life. Not the old book of your natural union, but your new bride. Hallelujah. Your new life is in the Lamb's book of life. Your marriage certificate. Hallelujah. Where your eternal through, it, through eternal germ from the beginning takes hold. Right, right. Amen. Now, you're not only forgiven, but you're justified. Amen. Glory justified. Amen. Romans 5, 1 said, yeah. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 said, therefore being justified by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. He said this in invisible union. Right. This is the legal proof of your eternal security. Right. You say you're married, yep. show proof that you're married. Amen. Right. <laughs> and this is your marriage certificate. If you right. see your name in the book, Amen. that's the seal. Right. That's the legal proof right. of your eternal security. Right. Right. Hallelujah. So the bright AIDS is the AIDS of open heaven. Right. Would the bride of Christ have... Would the bride of Christ have a ministry right. before the rapture? This was the question. Sure. Right. Hallelujah. Or will we just be playing tapes? <laughs> Brother Bam said, sure. Sure, we'll have a ministry. And that's what's going on right now. See, the bride of Christ, certainly, it is the message of the hour. That's the ministry. That's the bright age, the message of the hour. The bride of Christ, sure, she consists of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. Is that right? That's the bride of Christ, sure. She's got a ministry. It's a great ministry. It's the ministry of the hour. But it will be so humble. Amen. What is the ministry of the bride? That's right. 
Revelation 10 says it all. The minister of the bride is take the little book. And so John, I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. Now, this is the bride's ministry. After you see the book come open, you need to take it and eat it up. Exactly. Amen. You're not to argue about it. Right. And discuss differences in doctrines. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have to eat it. Right. Meaning make it a part of your life. Right. You see, in your, in your lips, it will be so sweet. Right. Oh, it's, it's so good to talk about the message of the hour. Uh, when you talk about the message of the hour, the word, <laughs> time just flies. Right. Right. Hallelujah. But when you start applying it in your life, that's right. That's right. you'll have some bitter experiences. <laughs> Hallelujah. As soon as I had it eaten, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, this is the ministry of the bride now. Thou must prophesy again before many people, nations, and tongues, and kings. This is our ministry. This is what should be taking place right now. You must prophesy again. Why did it say again? Because this message has already been prophesied. All you have to do is to repeat it. Prophesy again. Amen. Don't add your interpretation to it. Right. Amen. Amen. The message don't need your opinion. No. Right. Predestinated seed don't need to hear uh, 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 your opinion. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. But you need to prophesy again. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Okay. To many tongues. Yeah. This reminds me of the time that I went to Taipei in Taiwan. There was this Frenchman was working at the railway in Taipei. And he was a message believer. And uh, he looked around and there was, there was not one message church in Taipei. And so he heard about me doing the message presentation seminar. And he wrote me and said, Brother Rowell, will you be willing to come and hold a Mr. Expo seminar here in Taipei. I have a lot of minister friends here, and I can gather them together, and, and you present the message to them. I said, yeah. all right, you know. Of course, I prayed first, and, you know, I felt good about it. And so I went to Taiwan, to Taipei, and he rented a nice uh, hall in a nice hotel, like a four-star four -star hotel, and um, ordered food for about, uh, how many? 50, 50 ministers. He said, <clears throat> easily, 50 ministers will show up. You know, uh, he printed advertisement in the paper and uh, announced over the radio and uh, gave out leaflets to his friends, and he was expecting 50 ministers to come. Well, <clears throat> When the date came, we were all ready. We were all set up. <coughs> Nobody showed up. Not one minister showed up. <laughs> but then there was one, one man. His name is, I can never forget it, David Chang. And he showed up because of the money. This Frenchman promised to pay him if he would interpret my presentation in Chinese. <laughs> so he was the only one that showed up. But I was kind of having second thoughts because there was nobody there. I said, brother, what are we going to do? Should we go on with the presentation? And he said, brother, you know, I have all the, the, the uh, recording system set up because I want to, to record your presentation and I want, I want it translated into Chinese, <clears throat> Mandarin. And so uh, let's go ahead. Just pretend that there are people. <laughs> and it was the hardest thing to do. <laughs> that no one, nobody there. So I started uh, with my presentation and 
And Brother David Chang, he interpreted for me in Mandarin. <clears throat> By the middle of the presentation, Brother David Chang, a learned man, he is a theologian. He said, he stopped and said, Brother Roel, wait a minute. Where are you getting all this? <laughs> he said, I spent 12 years in Bible school. I've never heard any of this. <laughs> and so he went on with the presentation. But David Chang <clears throat> ended up accepting the message. <laughs> Hallelujah. One soul is worth 10,000 worlds. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is our ministry. Right. And Brother Branham said, you know, you're always in the will of God if you go to foreign mission. Right. Yeah. I went to foreign mission to preach to one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Amen. But praise the Lord. After that, he took me to his church, and they gladly received the word. Amen. It's a charismatic church. And then he took me to another Protestant church. <clears throat> American people were sitting in the, in the pew <clears throat> as I preached to them the message. And they glad to receive the Amen. message. Glory. Praise the Amen. Lord for it. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God of Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places Glory. in Christ. Amen. It can't slip. We can't fall. Oh God. The world thinks we're crazy. Yep. We're walking in space. But we're held, lifted up like the eagle, Lord. We've been caught away in a rapture of faith and glory. Yeah, and the angels of God are with us to minister spiritual blessings to us and to help us along the road and encourage us as we see the heel of Zion yonder inside. This is better than praying. He said, heavenly places, oh, how I wish I had a time. Here I've got, I've got it marked right here in my Bible about heavenly places. What is heavenly places? Heavenly places, just for a moment, is the believer's position in Christ. Hallelujah. Heavenly places is your position in Christ. Hallelujah. Where the believer stands in Christ. If you stand in Christ, you're in heavenly places. You should be enjoying the spiritual blessings God has in store for you in this age that we're living in. Ephesians 1.20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. You know, when he raised... We raised with him. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Our bodies are sitting here in Lula, Georgia. (coughs) But there's a part of us that's sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. (coughs) Now, Brother Branham said this, Revelation chapter 4, number 1. Now, I immediate, immediately after he, he showed the end of the age of his work here, he went on up into heaven and said, I'll show you what's going to be after this, after the church ages. He said, John, I cannot talk to you down there no more because I have left down there and I've come up higher. Come up here with me. Amen. Amen. And I'll show you what's going to take place hereafter. Amen. Oh, my. Hmm, oh, caught up in the vision, caught up into glory. <clears throat> so John was caught up from Patmos yep. into the heavens. Glory. Now, the, the scene is changing, Brother Ben said. John's been watching Patmos, and now he looks up. Why? He sees something went on on earth here, these church ages, and all down these seven church ages, 
And then after he got through seeing the church ages, after that, after the church, church ages ceased, and then he heard a voice. And he looked up toward heaven, and he seen an open door. And the first voice sounded like a trumpet. All right. The scene changed from Patmos to heaven. Amen. In Patmos, all he saw was crack rocks, parched earth, scorpions, prison bars, criminals, cursing and fighting. All he saw was suffering. <laughs> and God said, come up here, John. Right. Come up to heaven where there is eternal peace, comfort, wisdom, and understanding where there is spiritual blessings, power, and glory. Come up, Peter. Hallelujah. When the shock begins to pull away, this is our age. Now it's begin to pull away. The wheat is beginning to be seen. This is not a Pentecostal age. This is the latter day age. Amen. This is the bright age. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the evening light. This is when Malachi 4 must be fulfilled <coughs> to follow God's pattern. Right. This is Luke 17 30 right. to be fulfilled. Right. This is the age of calling out. We're not living in a Pentecostal age. Right. We're living in another age. See, we're not living in a Methodist age. Yep. We're living in another age. We're living. Right. On up here to the bright age, the calling out of the church and getting together, getting ready together for the rapture. And that's the age that we are living now. And to my honest opinion, Brother Bram said, that's exactly the truth. Now you see, if it's sweet time now, it's getting harvest time. This is not Luther's age. This is not Pentecost age. This is the bride age. Right. Repeatedly, Brother Branham says it. Yeah. This is another age. Right. This is another. Hallelujah. Right. This is the age of heaven. Yeah. Amen. Time has nothing to do with this. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And as Moses called a nation out of a nation, Christ today is calling a church out of a church. You see? The same thing in type. Taking them to the glorious, eternal, Amen. promised land. Right. Amen. God bless you Amen. so much. Amen. 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 I think we can, we, can, we can sing the windows of heaven are open Amen. with a new meaning now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let me just call the musicians. Sing the windows of heaven are open. And let's just enjoy the blessings God has in store for us. Right. Heaven is consistent of the word. Amen. In heaven, it's full of angels descending and ascending upon the ministry of the Son of Man. And the Son of Man is in the bride today. Hallelujah. Uh, fast. <laughs> the key of A, I think we, think we sing it. Yeah. Key of A. The windows, the windows of, of heaven, heaven are open. The blessings are falling to earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's joy, 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 joy in my heart. For Jesus makes everything right. Will I give him my old tattered garment? And he gave me.
Amen. The windows of heaven are open because the word has been revealed to show us it's open. See, it doesn't say about the open. It was there. The door was open. Huh? We just needed to know it. Open in the house by the revealing of the word. Amen. Amen. Let's sing another one. What we got? Amen. Sing it slowly. Anybody have a need? The altar's open. Just come and let's see. Let's just worship the Lord. Amen. 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 Five ninety six in this fire book. Amen. Anybody have a need? At night I lay in bed and I begin to cry and my mind just fails to know exactly why I can't explain with tongue or pen the Spirit's groanings deep within. It must be God here in my soul, cause I feel the pull. I feel the pull. I hear the call. Spirit's moving me to give my all. He speaks to me, and I agree. Lord, please come and take control. I feel the I went to, to hear the word, and, and with each line and phrase, he was drawing me to live a higher plane. There is a deep Explain with tongue or pen the spirit's groanings deep within. It must be God here in my soul, cause I feel the
Because it's pulling us higher and higher. Bring us up into the word to that place, Lord, that we need to be. Okay. Got a couple of announcements to make. Brother Donnie gave me the information about services for Ricky, and it's going to be at Buford at uh, Flounder, at Flounder Funeral Home. Yeah. In Buford, it'll be the, there will be visitation Wednesday from 5 to 8. That part there, then the funeral will be Thursday at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. on Thursday, so remember that. And just, uh, they will get the information of everything and everybody can get the arrangements, you know, more the the way to get there and all. Are they going to have the funeral there and then just truck him up for the burial? Because I'm sure he'll be buried up. With... Okay, so I figured that he'd be buried up to that place. So just remember that. We'll get all of the things together and get to the point of trying to understand, okay? Just pray for the family now, that the Lord may do. Now, I've got a little announcement to make on one thing. Uh, we've had a little trouble with the air conditioner system, and uh, we come to find out it wasn't a problem with the air condition, condition system. Somebody hit the wrong button. So uh, you hit the reset button on the air conditioner, when you start to change things, it automatically resets. This air conditioner system is programmed to where during the week it runs like 68 degrees, 78 degrees or something. It's got a set on it. Then it comes in and runs up Wednesday night and Wednesday afternoon it starts running and brings it down to the cool point. Sunday it comes in, it's eight o'clock, seven o'clock or in the morning it starts lowering the temperature, all right? But if you hit that reset button, and it's one right by the side of where you turn it to increase the fan to turn it on or off, if you hit that, you destroyed the whole system. So that's what it's been doing. We've been running air conditioner at night and heater in daytime, okay? So uh, you've somebody hit the wrong button. So just don't touch the system unless you know what you're doing because you you say, well, I'll just click this, and we'll, uh, you click the whole system, and that's what it's been doing. So please don't don't fool with it. Get with it with Richard or Aaron or something. I can at least run it up or down temperature, and I can check the fan. But don't uh, I don't like to fool with it either myself. So it doesn't you know it'll mess it up. But okay, you got that in mind. So you know if you need to move it up and down, let somebody know, and we'll take care of it. Okay, now the brother made the, the slide this morning and uh, in the presentation and those people that are there are uh, you know that lost everything at the volcano and trying to reestablish and they're going to put a church in now not to not the demolition don't get the two together not the demolition group this is the first group he told of this morning of where that they you know they would need a church and they're relocating next to the volcano again. And he, I've asked him what would it take, and he says that for about $5,000, they can rebuild a church and they can get a water system. That They have to dig a well out there, you know, hand, because there's no electricity. So it puts in and put a, just a pump thing, you pump it, you know, but at least it makes a system for the people. But I wanted, just wanted to put it to you and ask the church, is that all right to give them Five thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll do that, and that will take care of because we don't tell you a lot of times, but some of you know it. We always give money at Ruth. This will cover that part that we don't have to give any money at Ruth to do anything. And I've asked him, would this be in any way in relation to anything he was requesting? 
And he said, this church was not in any way requested. So we're getting that ahead of time to do that. So we'll just uh, have Lisa can handle whatever he needs to get the check, you know, whatever it takes care of for her to fix the, you know, for them to build a church and get a water system. Okay. All right. So the Lord will, will take care of a lot of things. And then we, we always, as I said, we always go up and give money at Ruth from the church. So this time we'll just have that already done. It's already settled here. All right. So remember that. And also remember now we'll be leaving to go up to Ruth on Friday to one thirty, about one, say one o'clock. So we're just, cause it's a long run to get there. And also if you go any with us Friday, let us know we're leaving at one o'clock and we'll run up to uh, be with them. All right. Make sure you tell brother, uh, I forget about his wife being with him today. She's around here somewhere, and I always generally try to welcome her, but, uh, you know, I just forgot you this morning, okay, sis? But we welcome you, too. We're glad you bring him. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't get to have him because you bring him and, and everything, and we appreciate that, okay? <laughs> just remember, brother, he'll be traveling on, and he'll be up at... He'll be up at uh, Ruth meetings and things, and then, then he's preaching next weekend for Brother uh, Joe Green and then Brother Tim Humes, Tim Humes like, you know, next weekend. So remember that, and just remember that. Remember these announcements about the Fawbush funeral if you need to know anything, okay? Brother Quinn will be with us next Sunday, and Brother Landland, and his name is... He said it's not Genesis. We got to get that straight. Genesis. 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 We'll call him Landland. <laughs> yeah, we call him Landland. But he will be with us not this coming Wednesday, but the ninth, I believe it is, which will be the next. Okay. Are all minds clear? Tell our brother how much you appreciate him. Anybody has anything you'd like to give to him? Always announce this about the brothers from the foreign field. If you have anything you want to give to them, feel free to do. If you want to write them a check, check with Lisa. You can write the check. You can write it off your taxes. You can do everything with it if you want to give that way or if you want to just give something, okay? Amen. All right. Father, we thank you for this day and your grace. Thank you for the message our brother has brought unto us. And we truly believe that heaven has opened its doors for us, that we can rapture up into higher places and into the great position that we need to be. We ask you to be with us and bless each one. Bless Brother Royal as he travels on and the ministering and things here and just be with him. Be with the people there in his country and all in the, the land there, the people and the many different ministers that are now going out. We thank you, Lord, that maybe we can just send a few dollars every once in a while to help them to pay the bills or something with. And we ask you to just help us and guide us. Forgive our sins and lead us by thy grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Amen. Amen. Kia Beth. <clears throat> Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise.